Polsce i e, witam e, pierwszej edycji w serii English Just For You dla widzów na moim polskim kanale. Oto mam e, 200 zdań w języku angielskim. Każde zdanie zawiera co najmniej jeden błąd i e, moja rola w tym jako lektor języka angielskiego to e, przedstawić wam gdzie ten błąd i skorygować to zdanie także e, co, co miesiąc w tej edycji e, będę wybierał 10 zdań pośród 200 ale będę te zdania już tłumaczył w języku angielskim także żebyśmy odsłuchaliśmy się w tym lub żeby, żeby Państwo słuchali się w tym języku angielskim. Także zapraszam do obejrzenia. So here goes for the first sentence. We'll go in the middle. Safe bet. And it's a negative question why you haven't done your homework it's what we call the perfect tense something which has or hasn't happened in recent times but the time is not important well in the question there ought to be the reverse of words what we call the inversion so the correct answer is why haven't you done your homework That's it. Let's now look at the next sentence. Just to say that each sentence we do is marked in red, so as in future editions, we don't repeat them. And all the videos are available for you to look back on. So let's go for the second sentence. We'll look towards the top this time. As you can see, and we have got this one. We have a lots of problems. So in this case, uh, if we've got A, we cannot put an S on the lot. It has to be singular or plural the whole thing has to be either singular or plural so in that case either we say we have lots of problems or we have a lot of problems there you go and so now we'll go on to the third one. time we'll go to the bottom of the pile there is this one All random, of course. Again, we're using the negative, and as it's as we see it reads, I don't know who is he. I don't know who is he. Um, rather, the sentence should end with the B verb. He is. So the correct version is I don't know who he is it is an it, what we call an indirect question um, normally we would ask who is he as a direct question but an indirect question is uh, where we have uh, an additional phrase uh, at the beginning of the sentence for example I'd like to know where you live okay then so that's uh, sentence number three we'll now move on to something in the middle of the pile or above the middle and I've pulled out this one. Oh, how weird it's very similar to the previous one so where does she lives it's not an indirect question in fact it is a direct question so as we can see on the auxiliary verb we've got an S there is no need to put the same S on the 
verb it remains infinitive so um, it should be then or it is where does she live sentence number four now let's move on to sentence number five. Sentence number five towards the bottom of the pile. This one then. It's a long one actually, I'll just mark it in red. <clears throat> I was run in the park when I meet my friend. Two mistakes here. Uh, the longer action ought to be in what we call the continuous with the ing. So out of the two, the running is the longer action rather than the one meet um, which interrupted my run. So the correct sentence then in that case is I was running in the park when that moment time I met my friend which interrupted my run okay so now we're halfway through we'll move on to sentence number six so let's now look at number six go somewhere in the middle It says he's coming to the lessons every week. To the lesson every week, rather. Well, every week means it's uh, not happening now. It is something of a habit. In this case, we use the simple tense. So, the correct version is he comes to the lesson every week. Or, you could say each week. Doesn't make any difference. So... Let's move on now to number seven. Sentence number seven. More at the top. Another long one. Another long one. Similar to number five. Um, so. When I arrived home last night, my wife make dinner. Well, when I arrived, short action. Um, here we have a problem with the verb. Uh, this is the infinitive. Whereas in the past, it ought to be the past simple verb of make, which is make, made, rather. Uh, so when I arrived home, my wife made dinner. Well, you could argue, you could argue was making dinner. So, uh, in this case, she was in the middle of making dinner, or uh, had made dinner, which means that the dinner was on the table ready and waiting when I arrived home. The, the past in the past, the time before. So when when you say when I arrived home, my wife made dinner. First, I arrived home. No dinner on the table. My wife wasn't doing anything. Next thing, she made dinner. Hope, hope that makes sense. Sentence number eight. Close my eyes. And... Again, we've got a question. Are you wanting more time? We'll mark it in red. We've done it. Are you wanting more time? Now, want is not what we call an action verb. It's not an action to want. It's a state. Therefore, we don't use the ing form. Rather, it should remain in its simple form, in its basic form. Do you want more time? Yes or no? Right, let's now move on to the penultimate question. Uh, sorry, the sentence. Sentence number nine, then, the penultimate one. This one. 
hanging this picture on the wall. It says hanging this picture on the wall. Well, it's an instruction. Uh, in, in, in linguistic terms, that means the imperative. Um, in which case we commence the sentence with the infinitive of the verb, which is hang. So it's an instruction, hang this picture on the wall. If we want to use the polite form, then we'd say, please hang this picture on the wall. Or hang this picture on the wall, please. And now for the final sentence. <laughs> Final sentence in this September edition is as follows, rather from the top. It says, I'm not liking this coffee. So rather, um, such as uh, with the verb want, like is also a state. Yep. So um, we obviously can't say I'm not liking. But rather, as a state, it's the infinitive should be used. So the correct uh, version is, I don't like this coffee. It's my opinion. Okay, so those are the sentences in this edition. To tyle na dziś. Mam nadzieję, że się Wam spodobało, że wszystko w języku angielskim Zrozumieliście? Ja jestem zdania, że język angielski powinien być uczony w języku angielskim, bo wiadomo, tylko że to zależy od poziomu, bo wiadomo, że początkujący będzie miał z tym problemy. Więc tak, wracam w październiku z kolejną edycję, 10 kolejnych zdań. Ta sama edycja leci na moim angielskim e, kanale e, John's Box, więc jeśli chcielibyście tam zajrzeć i może zasubskrybować przy okazji, to fajnie by było. Także ja teraz lecę e, i widzimy się za niedługo w kolejnym wideo na kanale John w Polsce. Na razie, cześć wam.